In an effort to set itself apart from its exceptional predecessors, Mario Kart World knew it needed to do something very different. With previous entries having perfected the kart racer formula, Mario Kart World instead places its focus on its, well, world. The new interconnected map allows us to drive from any track to another without pause. And since release, players have been driving all over the world map in a giant world tour. But nobody has been asking, what is the fastest route to race through every track? And while we're at it, what route is slowest? Other than it being an interesting question in itself, knowing which path is fastest can be useful if we're wanting to race through all the tracks but don't have too much time to spend doing so. This could also be useful information for potential speedruns. And knowing the slowest route is useful if you want to bully your friends. To answer our question, we need two things. First, a data set consisting of track values. Second, an algorithm to run through said data. Afterwards, we can analyze our results and any other interesting information we found along the way. Let's start with our data. We're going to need some way to measure values for each of the game's connections, of which there are 202. Now, measuring distance in this game isn't really practical considering it's only measured with stickers, but we can measure in time, which is actually more useful to us since we're looking for the fastest path. How will I do this? We need our results to be as consistent as possible. For this, I decided on using only Mario in the standard cart. Every race 150cc. No computers, no items, no rail grinding, no wall riding, no tricking, and even no drifting. Even drifting can add a lot of variation to results. Go ahead and race the Koopa Troopa Beach World Record to see for yourself. I also knew that I couldn't simply turn on Auto Accelerate and Smart Steering and let it go. Some tracks are much wider than others. So, in the end, I decided that I would follow the center line as much as possible. If there was a dashed white line, I followed it. And otherwise, I stuck to where I believed the most central path to be. Only swerving to avoid hazards. Only going for coins if they're in my way. The timer starts at go, and ends when I reach my destination track. Track times themselves are not included in calculations, but easily could be added in the future. But for now, I wanted to focus on the connections themselves. And yes, I did this for all 202 connections. Some people already get bored of these even when there's 24 racers, tons of items, tricks, drifts, etc. But honestly, doing this really made me appreciate the world design of this game. It's so wonderfully connected. I even took some notes on some of the cool things I saw in my travels. Some events are unscripted, notably the cars driving around, and there's even this one car that randomly shows up to throw junk at you. Sometimes mushrooms and coins, sometimes bombs and bananas. The time of day and the weather seem to not be preset. Music is not preset, but seems to be pulling from a pre-selected list based on the area. Every track has a prelude song building up to the main theme that appears when you reach that final lap. Sometimes those big item box rings you see in Knockout Tour appear on these paths. The HD rumble is awesome, especially when you're driving next to the safari animals. Players in split screen are eliminated if they fall too far behind, likely to save on resources. The dinosaurs near Dino Dino Jungle seem to rotate each playthrough. Sometimes you race a little bit of a track, like the Indian Depths, before you race on the actual path. There's this giant whale that sometimes appears in the ocean, and makes huge waves. Also, if you haven't raced from Whistlestop Summit to Choco Mountain, you should try it. It's super cool. Taking a look at the map itself, can you guess which track has the most outgoing and incoming paths? If you guessed Moo Moo Meadows, you're wrong, but totally reasonable to think that with how open it is and its central location but it's actually Toad's Factory, with a total of 11 paths. I found this rather strange, considering the track feels pretty closed off. As far as least paths go, every track has a minimum of 5 outgoing paths, likely to prevent the three choices from always being the same. But as far as incoming paths go, Rainbow Road of course has the least at just one. But after that is DK Spaceport, with only 3 incoming paths. 
This is likely due to how long the final lap is, and this hypothesis is further supported by looking at Koopa Troopa Beach. Despite only having 5 outgoing paths, it has 8 incoming, likely due to how short the last lap is. Here's a full look at the map and all connections, with arrows representing which way tracks go. Most paths go both ways, but not all. As I went, I slowly filled out a spreadsheet with recorded times. But if the time was within 5 seconds on a double directional path, I assumed it was roughly the same path and averaged the two times. Normally with an experiment like this, I would race each track multiple times and take an average, but with how long this takes, roughly 15 hours, I decided once was enough. With all times now recorded, let's go over some highlights. The full spreadsheet and other resources can be found in the description, but here I will focus on the top 10 fastest and slowest paths. For our top 10 fastest times, we have at number 10, Peach Stadium to Chaco Mountain. 9. Chaco Mountain to Peach Stadium. 8. Starview Peak to DK Pass. 7. Koopa Troopa Beach to Crown City. 6. Peach Stadium to Rainbow Road. 5. Toad's Factory to Dry Bones Burnout. 4. Great Question Block Ruins to Dino Dino Jungle. 3. Peach Stadium to Moo Moo Meadows. 2. Moo Moo Meadows to Peach Stadium. And at number 1, Dry Bones Burnout to Toad's Factory, at a total of 1 minute, 1 second. For our top 10 slowest tracks, we have at number 10, Acorn Heights to Dandelion Depths. 9. Crown City to Wario Stadium. 8. Sky High Sunday to Salty Salty Speedway. 7. Mario Circuit to Starview Peak. 6. Toad's Factory to Dandelion Depths. 5. Wario Shipyard to Starview Peak. 4. Starview Peak to Cheap Cheap Falls. 3. Sky High Sunday to Cheap Cheap Falls. 2. Starview Peak to Wario Shipyard. And number 1, at a time of 3 minutes and 17 seconds, Desert Hills to Koopa Troopa Beach. Here's also an updated version of the graph. It shows the times for every connection. The number next to the arrowhead represents the path going towards that track. And while we're at it, I also made some other graphs for fun. Here's a graph showing all the Grand Prix and which paths they take. And here's another graph showing the knockout tours and all paths they take. Alright, now that we have all our data in our table and our graph drawn, we need to calculate our fastest route. So, how do we do that? You might be thinking, well, let's pick a starting point, and then pick the fastest path from that point. And at each point we get to, we'll pick the fastest path from there, and so on, until we visited all of them. While this isn't a bad line of thinking, and so long as you avoid falling to a corner, you will get a good answer. This won't always find us the best path. For example, we don't even know if the point we started on is our best possible starting point, let alone all possible paths being their best. We call this line of thinking a greedy algorithm because we want an answer fast. But in order to find the true fastest route, we need to examine every single possible combination. That sounds exhausting, right? If we multiply together the number of paths each track has, we have upwards of whatever this number is, 23 zeros. I just know it's over a trillion. And I know that nobody on Earth has time for that. In fact, no computer has time for that. The kind of problem we have here is known as the Traveling Salesperson Problem, or TSP for short. It's used in the real world all the time, such as an Amazon truck trying to deliver your packages. The problem's easy to understand, but it takes a lot of work to solve. Even having a computer run through every possible combination would take us a very long time, so we're going to need to write an algorithm that optimizes the time to find us an answer. We can trim off paths that we know won't yield us any strong results. The algorithm I used here is called a branch inbound reduced matrix algorithm. It's a little tricky to explain, so I linked a video in the description that shows roughly how it works. If you want to know more, I would be happy to try to explain it myself, but let's keep this video focused on Mario Kart. 
I also made it so our code starts at Peach Stadium and then runs through everything, since we need to go through Peach Stadium anyways. And after the algorithm is finally done running, here is our final path. Where do we start? None other than Moo Moo Meadows. This makes a lot of sense as it's so central to the map and a lot of paths could end up here. It's also pretty nice because it means we can start at Peach Stadium if we want to do a full cycle. But anyways, here's the full path. We start at Moo Moo Meadows, then move to Choco Mountain, then Crown City, Koopa Troopa Beach, DK Spaceport, Whistle Stop Summit, Desert Hills, Mario Bros Circuit, Shy Guy Bazaar, Wario Stadium, Airship Fortress, Bowser's Castle, Toad's Factory, Dry Bones Burnout, Acorn Heights, Mario Circuit, Boo Cinema, Dandelion Depths, DK Pass, Starview Peak, Sky High Sunday, Wario Shipyard, Peach Beach, Salty Salty Speedway, Great Question Block Ruins, Dino Dino Jungle, Far Away Oasis, Cheap Cheap Falls, Peach Stadium, and to finish it off, Rainbow Road. Our final time comes in at a total of 2,520 seconds, exactly 42 minutes. This does not include loading times or the time it takes to race on the track itself. After modifying the algorithm a little bit, we can also use it to find the longest path. Here is the result. Toad's Factory, Mario Bros Circuit, Wario Stadium, Choco Mountain, Whistle Stop Summit, Crown City, Desert Hills, Shy Guy Bazaar, Airship Fortress, Bowser's Castle, Mario Circuit, Starview Peak, Cheap Cheap Falls, Wario Shipyard, DK Pass, Moo Moo Meadows, Dry Bones Burnout, Boo Cinema, Acorn Heights, Dandelion Depths, Sky High Sunday, Salty Salty Speedway, Dino Dino Jungle, Peach Beach, Far Away Oasis, Great Question Block Ruins, Koopa Troopa Beach, DK Spaceport, Peach Stadium, and finally, Rainbow Road. Our final time for our longest path comes in at a total of 4,258 seconds. That's almost 71 minutes. The longest path takes 70% longer to complete than the shortest path. Now that I had all these numbers put in, I wanted to put all the information I found to the test. So I decided, let's race through all the tracks from start to finish on the fastest path and slowest path and look at the difference in time. And I didn't want to just do this alone because I thought that could be a little boring, so I invited a guest, YouTuber Toast Ghost. Say hello. Hello. Yeah, so first we raced through all the tracks in the fast path. Our final time came in an hour and 28 minutes. Unsurprisingly, the path to Kuba Troopa Beach was the shortest at 2 minutes and 11 seconds. And DK Spaceport was the longest at 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Thank you, Toast Ghost. After having raced through every track on the fastest path, we went and we raced through all the tracks on the slowest path. On this path, our final time was 1 hour, 54 minutes, which was more than 25 minutes slower. Super slow. <laughs> On average, it's about a minute slower per track. The slowest segment was from Wario Shipyard to Cheap Cheap Falls at 4 minutes 38 seconds. And the fastest segment was from Whistle Stop Summit to Choco Mountain at 2 minutes and 55 seconds. So Toast Ghost, preferences on which you would rather play again. Would you rather race through them all on the fastest path around, or would you rather race on the longer path? I think like that's kind of hard because like I think the slower tracks like they're definitely more there's a lot more going on like they're very aesthetically pleasing a lot more like to them but also like them being like almost a minute longer for each track you like really feel it by the time you get into the end you're like oh my goodness <laughs> it's kind of long compared to the other one I like speed so I'll probably go with the shortest 
Just whichever one gets you done first. Yeah. You hate Mario Kart. Yeah. I think that is about it. Alright, thank you everyone for watching. The amount of time I put into this compared to how much I'm gonna get paid, which is zero. Not worth it. So, I appreciate any likes and subscribes. Even one like would be awesome. If we can hit one like, I'll do a one like special. Bye! Ta-ta for now. Anyways.